Good afternoon, everybody. This is Cornell University's live stream to provide you with some information on the biomedical engineering programs, including the PhD program and the Masters of Engineering program. And let me briefly introduce myself. I am Jan Namading. I'm the Director of Graduate Studies, so I'm responsible for the PhD program. And with me here are Dr. Newton DeFaria, who is the Director of the Masters of Engineering program, and Belinda Floyd, the Graduate Field Assistant, or known amongst the students as the mother of all graduate students, who will be dealing with you with applications, any questions that come up either during your application or once you're a student here at Cornell. I'd also encourage you to check out our virtual tours and find more information, visit our virtual booth in the exhibitor hall, and you can also use the links here to find information on the PhD program and the Masters of Engineering program. So let me tell you a little bit about Cornell in general before then providing more information on the PhD program, what we think makes us very unique and hopefully an excellent home for you. And then Dr. DeFaria will talk more about the Masters of Engineering program. So we are a relatively new program, Cornell's BME program was founded in 2004. We started an undergraduate major in 2015. And so we're still growing. We anticipate hiring one or two faculty every year. And it also means that our faculty are still very young, enthusiastic and very engaged for the students, which I think many of you students will find is comforting and being able to take advantage of it. Currently, we have 23 faculty in the department itself. What's important, though, is to recognize that when you apply to Cornell Biomedical Engineering's PhD program, you don't apply to the department, but you apply to the graduate field of biomedical engineering, which means that any faculty member at Cornell who's part of the BME graduate field is available to serve as your primary PhD advisor without needing a, just a co-advisor. And so that means you can work in laboratories that are in other departments as long as the faculty member is a part of the BME graduate field. This graduate field includes laboratories at the medical school in New York City, so you can pursue a PhD both in Ithaca as well as in a few labs in New York City. And so as you're exploring options and look, looking through our faculty directory, please make sure that when you look at available faculty, you look at the link both that says faculty, but also click on the link that says graduate field faculty below it, which will give you this extended list of over 60 faculty that are available as your primary advisor. The research areas we cover are quite plentiful, so I think almost anything that you're interested in, you will be able to find a home. We often group it into these six categories that are biomechanics, mechanobiology, biomedical imaging and instrumentation, with a particular focus on optical and light microscopy, drug delivery and nanomedicine, molecular and cellular engineering, systems and synthetic biology, which is a rapidly growing area here, as well as tissue engineering and biomaterials. And I should point out that the biomechanics and mechanobiology really ranges anywhere from the molecular level, cellular level, all the way to the organis organismal level. And so we have particular strength in nanofabrication, cancer research. We have one of the NCI-funded physical science oncology centers here between Ithaca and our Wild Cornell Medical Campus, as well as just extremely strong fields in orthopedic biomechanics, drug delivery, and tissue engineering. Importantly, due to this graduate field system that I mentioned, you have many other opportunities available at Cornell. So in that sense, many labs at Cornell, if you're excited in their research, you'd likely be able to work in those labs as part of a BME PhD. Just to provide you with a little bit in terms of, of the demographics of our program, we currently have 126 PhD students with quite an extensive diversity. It's something that we're really working hard to just to maintain that and, and further grow it. The average time to degree is 5.4 years with very few students needing more than six years. We're really trying to keep it a fairly tight distribution. And we have a more than 90% graduation rate. So we really believe that our selection process, which is a very holistic process, process is very comprehensive. And so when you arrive here, you really are well qualified to succeed. And at the same time, we'll support you along your way to make sure that you will be successful. And this success is reflected in part 
in many of the accomplishments of our students as they've continued their career, but already often during the studies. We've had the last three years alone more than 17 NSF graduate fellowship winners. We've had students winning fellowships from the American Heart Association, Canadian Research Fund, and several other opportunities. And so this is, again, we believe that students, particularly students we select are often strong academically, research-wise, but also have interests in, for example, outreach service and other opportunities which make them particularly round and provide them with leadership skills. We really do want to cater to all career paths. So about a third of our students in our program pursue careers in academia, and about two thirds of the students who graduate from the PhD program go into industry. Plus some students then also go to professional schools, medical school, business school. We have students working in science policy and various other academic career paths. And we really see as our mission not to steer in one path or the other, but to help you to identify what is the best fit for you. So early on in your PhD already, we're trying to connect you to learn more about opportunities in these various careers so that you can identify what you're interested in and then help you build your career path, develop the skills needed for those careers. We also have an extensive network of alumni, both in industry and academia, which can then help you as well to secure those positions. One part that's very unique about the Cornell BME PhD program is that we have a clinical immersion term where you spend the first summer, so after having spent nine months in Ithaca, you go to New York City where our medical school is located and you spend typically about seven to eight weeks working at the hospital with a clinical mentor. And so you have an opportunity to perform clinical research with them, experience surgeries. And the goal is really just to gain and really just the medical experience, identify needs and challenges of technologies in the clinical practice. Because what we've seen is most students who enter BME PhD programs have extensive research experience in the wet lab, maybe computationally, but very few of them have actually worked with doctors just to see what actual patients needs. And so we've been finding this extremely rewarding for the students that often led to publications and to new collaborations as well. And the full housing and stipend are provided for the summer, so you can really enjoy the time in New York City. Our philosophy for our coursework is that BME is such a diverse field that we really try to minimize the number of courses that we prescribe to you. And we wanna give you the maximum flexibility in what courses you select, because we think that if someone who wants to build a two photo microscope will probably require very different courses than someone who wants to work on new tissue engineering or drug delivery approaches. And so we kept the required courses to a minimum. So that we're each in their first three semesters, there's one single class that is required in the first year, it's called the Seminar for First Year Biomedical Engineering Students, where we provide and connect you with the resources available at Cornell. We show you and help you to mentor you, for example, to apply for graduate fellowships, as well as point you to resources at Cornell. In the spring semester, we have core concepts in disease, which provide some information on common clinical aspects and also prepares you for the clinical immersion term. And then in the summer, we have the clinical immersion experience for you. The only other required classes are essentially seminars, either the BME 7900 seminar, where we have external speakers, as well as work in progress seminars. And I encourage you to check out our BME PhD student handbook, which is available on our website. And so that lists several of the requirements for the courses, as well as a large number of suggested classes for you to take. So why Cornell, why should you choose us? So we believe we really have a lot of world-class faculty and facilities to offer in various research areas. But I think that is something that a lot of the other top programs you're looking at will likely be able to offer as well. We really believe that it's very important to give students sufficient time. So we do not have a direct admission system, but students arrive at Cornell and they have the entire first semester to identify a faculty advisor. And it gives you a chance not only to talk to the professor, but also to talk to people in the lab, learn about the mentoring style, learn about the environment there so that you can identify what is the best fit for you. We have this unique clinical immersion summer term that I've mentioned, which I think has really been a very enriching experience. We provide a lot of freedom and flexibility in the selection of courses and in the selection of a thesis committee, again, to allow you to shape the right PhD and the right path that's best for you.
And really, I think one of our biggest prides is our really engaged and supportive student community. And hopefully you'll get a chance as well to meet with them during the Cornell virtual booth here at the meeting and to talk directly to them and learn about their experiences here in Ithaca. Faculty extremely enthusiastic, collaborative, and very accessible. And as I mentioned, we really do cater to all career paths. And we think it shouldn't be a priority one or the other, but it's really helping you to identify which career path you are interested in, no matter what direction it takes you. And then lastly, that Ithaca really just provides us a wonderful environment here. Housing is very affordable. The stipend is pretty generous. You'll actually find that at the end of the day, you have money available just to enjoy, to travel. We have some students who buy houses. And really, I think the quality of life, outdoor activities is just amazing here. I think right now we just have a tremendous, beautiful fall. And then lastly, we do not have a GRE. We abolished it two years ago. We decided that really there's very little predictive value in it. It has numerous issues with it. And so we believe in a much more holistic review process. There's no need to submit your GRE scores to us. They will be blinded anyway. We also don't have a qualifying exam where again, we believe more in the flexibility to shape your own path. With that, I just like to just uh, encourage you just to visit our booth, get more information, talk to faculty. Many of our faculty are available throughout the BME meeting, the BMES meeting as well. And you can also go to our website and learn more about the PhD program. And then lastly, applications are due on December 10th. And so we really encourage you to apply. We have admissions fee waivers available as well. If you go to our virtual booth, you will find information there. And with that, I'm happy to hand over to Dr. DeFaria, who will tell you more about the Masters of Engineering program. Thank you, Dr. Lemadine. So not all of us are going or are tailored to go towards a PhD. And also, uh, uh, bi biomedical engineering is a very unique field in which potentially a master's degree, more specifically a professional master's degree, could be important to you. So our program is focused to educate you know, exceptional individuals like Cornell looked for it. And you are, have passion for humans and animals. But what's important that we wanted to form future leaders that will be innovators. Uh, so with that in mind, let me start a little bit with, uh, uh, with a little bit of, um, how do I say, setting. One of the reasons why BME uh, Masters of Engineering is important. Can you share the next slide? All right. So uh, uh, a couple of years ago, I was listening to Dr. Michael Hess. Uh, presentation on biomedical engineering. And this slide inspired me it, because I like it's a great way to describe the profession. Like biomedical engineers integrate across engineering disciplines. Also, we focus on the application, not the technology in itself. But these many disciplines are included in many of our solutions, electrical engineering, mechanical, embedded materials, modeling, all these different kinds of aspects of it. We don't have time to learn all that in our undergrads. And then sometimes we take a lifetime to get understanding all of these types of things. And his question is that, are we really engineers or more like architects? We have to understand technology, human needs. We have to understand how, you know, the general building blocks of a system. We have this multidisciplinary approach, regulatory, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it's a very good way to present, you know, the profession to you in a certain way. Uh, next slide. So what else should we learn or should we know beyond our undergrad? Well, sometimes we don't have a chance to learn about product life cycle in the industry they're going to serve. Sometimes we don't have a chance to get and learn frameworks and processes like the biodesign process, like agile processes and so forth. Understand exactly about the total product life cycle of, of, of a technology and, and, and et cetera. We don't have time to learn in depth or about regulatory and management and other aspects of it. So all these different things beyond STEM are important for us to have. Next slide. So what do you do? So generally we intend to pursue more education. And when we go to from undergrad to graduate level, the first word that comes to mind is PhD. Well, it's an amazing pathway as Dr. Lamberdine described. Uh, you have, uh, you know, many years to dive deeper into some level of specialization, and you can actually pursue a career in academia and or in industry with that depth of level. But what I like is what was presented. Yeah, next slide. It's perfect. Thank you. 
Like for instance, uh, Dr. Yeager was giving a presentation uh, about professional careers or careers post undergraduate. And he presented this, this paradox, biotech or biomedical master's degree is a new option for PhD. Not a lower option, but a new status of profession. And he even describes that there's resistance from all different sides because sometimes in academia, we want to form academicians and we think like, you know what I mean? Uh, PhD is a must for everybody or even think that for you to be successful in a professional career, you require to have a PhD. That's not the case. For many, yes, not for, our, for others. So what do we do here in our program? At Cornell, we have we created a program that caters for the majority of you with many different pathways. We ask for you to do it in a minimum of two semesters, 30 credits, and we develop our, 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 our curriculum in three prongs, professional development courses, graduate level STEM courses, and design. So you will actually learn a little bit more about how to be, you know, uh, develop acumen, professional acumen. You're gonna dive deeper and broader into your STEM, and you're gonna learn about techniques that are professional level techniques for design. Jan? So our curriculum, as Jan mentioned, you are different. You come from many different backgrounds. You want to go different places, like you want to pursue a career in uh, as a professional, as an entrepreneur, as a medical doctor, get an MBA, pursue your PhD. So we allow you to actually follow the pathway that you intend to as to pursue after you finish our program. So he, he, uh, we go through an advising process, we learn about you and we guide you in relation to what to do during our program, which is extremely important. Next slide. So being that said, uh, attend, please attend our, our more our booth. We can describe a little more in details. One of the things that are unique to our program at Cornell is the fact that we also offer you the possibility to acquire a master's of engineering degree in biomedical engineering and also combine and if one more year, get also an MBA. So it's called one plus one program. So you start as an MEng and you continue as an MBA and you finish in two years with two degrees, which is an important uh, uh, valuable career for you that wanted to be innovator and entrepreneur. So uh, with that, uh, we open the floor for questions. Uh, by the way, uh, go see our, uh, uh, you know, virtual tours and uh, uh, as uh, for image differently than PhD, our application is rolling and our decisions is also rolling. Uh, as soon as you, as soon as you apply, uh, the sooner we can actually give you a, uh, a decision uh, about our program. And I think the floor is open for questions uh, for me uh, or Dr. Lemmerding. We'll be happy to take any questions. And if you don't have any media questions, we really do encourage you to visit our booth. We have current students available in both the M Master's of Engineering program and the PhD program, as well as many, many of our faculty. If you click, go to our booth, you will see a link that says, talk to us. If you click on that link, you'll see a schedule of when faculty are available. The booth itself is staffed essentially just from nine to five every day during the, during the meeting here. Yeah, th there's a question here. Is, is the MBA program also available for PhD students? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> Wow. It's, I think, the plus one option, I believe, is available, but so you would just complete your PhD and then do the MBA afterwards. Another, and we, oh, sorry, go ahead. Another question is as, uh, do we have information, specific information about uh, placement for PhD program students? In terms of academic placement? Company. Company. Company, we, we do have that information available, I guess, would we'll probably just uh, take a little too long to go through all of these options now, but, but we have the information available. So it ranges really from small startup companies to large pharmaceutical biotech companies, Medtronic, GSK, and students have started their own companies as well. We do have a commercialization program and an entrepreneurship minor or certificate. So we really just uh, do help students in, in, with those ambitions as well. Same thing for the image across the board. Our students go all over the place. Uh, and there's another question. Oh, Mar Marilyn just answered. You know, GRE was just for the semester, it's for everybody. Yep. 
Yeah, so the GRE, so we, that's a permanent step for us. So both the master's and the PhD, we abolished the GRE last year and it's not coming back. All right. What, seems like uh, we have a few seconds left. Anyone else? Please visit the booth if you have any further questions and we'll we'll be happy to talk to you there. Thank you all very much. Great. Thank you. Bye bye everyone.